Hi, this is Chase Morrison with Resource Planning Solutions. We're a financial planning reporting consulting company and we focus on providing services to emerging and mid-sized businesses. Our specialty is developing and implementing business performance solutions that enable sustained value creation for our clients. Today I'm going to talk to you about the use of Excel's choose function in financial reporting applications. The choose function is pretty useful in a number of reporting situations where you need to change values in a report for a given period of time. And you can set this up for various users. Excel example is made up of three different worksheets. So this is the plan worksheet. And the way this is set up is set up for a commercial company that actually sells a product that has a standard cost and it uh, organizes its products by family. Okay. And generally uh, products that are within a family have a similar average sales price and cost so that you can kind of analyze them together. So in this example, I have product family A, product family B, and within product family A, then I have two separate products. I have product A1 and product A2, and then the total of family A. And again, this is the uh, plan sheet. So then within each product, I have the average sales price. So this is in whole dollars. So this would be some product that costs $1,650 each just for example, and then the units, the plan units for the month of January, 2,727 units, and then the revenue, which I'm converting into thousands of dollars just to keep this a little bit tighter, but so that would be $4.5 million. And then you just kind of go across the columns and see what the totals are. Costs are the ASPs are here. So this one has a $1,650 ASP. This one has a little bit lower ASP. So who knows why, uh, might be targeting a lower market or whatever. And then this is the total of the uh, two products within the one family. Then just scrolling down here, then you can see product B is like product A. It's got uh, two separate products within this one family. You can see though the ASPs are a little bit different. Maybe this is a lower technology option or it's targeting a different market or whatever. And then underneath that, then I have some other things that aren't really in a family per se. So I've got, uh, say some different types of accessories. So this is a really expensive accessory. This is a very inexpensive accessory. And then there's just some other adjustments. And then I get to my uh, my overall revenue plan, which is down here at the bottom. So I'm showing that I have, that would be $15,082,000 in revenue in the first month. And I have 11,186 dollars or 11,186 units in the average ASP is $1,348. Then on the next tab I have are the actuals. So this is where I would theoretically be recording all my actuals. So in this hypothetical example, I have uh, four months of actuals. So I'm into the second quarter. So this is a uh, business that goes January 1 to December 31 is their fiscal year. And I have a full quarter's worth of data plus one month and one uh, one quarter. All right, and um, then this is giving me my actual my actual ASPs and revenue. So in the month of January, I had uh, 4.6 million dollars of revenue for product one. I sold 2,500 units, went out the door, and the average ASP is calculated. You can see it up here in the formula bar, just calculating the ASP based on what actually happened. And you know this just kind of goes down through all the products. So product A, A2, the product A family, go down a little bit farther. Here's B1 and B2, and family B1 and B2, the accessories, and you know then the, the totals for the current period. So the objective here is, is to set up a summary report that compares the plan to the actuals, comparing this actual page to the plan page and trying to do some uh, summary analysis. So that's what this third tab is doing for you through the choose function. So on this tab, we basically, we have our summary of all the activity on those other two tabs on the plan and the actual. So uh, 
this is set up down here to look at a couple of cells that I've created. And uh, the cells that I'm looking at are this cell here. So I have this beginning month, which means the it's the first month that I want in my range for my report. And then the end month is my last reporting month that I want to see. And these two not these two cells here basically control the range of the analysis on the report. And that's what makes this nice. So if I just wanted a report, say, that was looking at January, I would put in a one here. And then if I put in a one here, okay, then it completely changes my report up here at the top. So now you can see that I have my January revenue, 4.5 million for product 1A, and then for pro, and then this is the units, and as you recall, the ASP. And then this is looking over at the actual sheet, so I have 4.6 million of actuals and 2.5 million in, uh, in, in units. So if I wanted to change this and I wanted to analyze this report for February, I just have to click this number here to a two, and voila, my report is now through February. So now the this data here, this revenue here for the month of February is actually the total of the January and the February revenue, and then these are the units. These are the units over here, 5,636. And then over here, the actual. So if I wanted it for the quarter, for the first quarter, pretty simple. I just go in and, and change that. So here you can see the actual for the first quarter is uh, 15 million, 15 million, 200,000 versus 14 million, 900,000 for the plan. So I have a favorable balance. So how's that working? So but basically it's up here in this choose function is doing all the work. And the way this works is, is first off, um, you, you need to name a cell here. So I've named uh, a starting cell here so that I could uh, seed this value of this choose function. Um, so choose, basically the way this choose function works is, is it goes down and this is kind of the first choose function here. So it basically has a list of 12 parameters, that, and well, it has 13 inputs, but this first input is saying, hey, choose the the whatever number is returned by start out of all these parameters. So this is, would be number one. So it says if start equals one, then return this value. If start equals two, return this value. If start equals three, return this value, and so on and so forth. So down here, I mean, for those of you that may not be familiar with named ranges, I've named this cell V, V31. Its name is start. And the way you can see that is, is you can look right up here and see that when I have my cursor in there, that uh, you can see the word start up here. So basically, anytime, anytime I put start into a formula, like I could just put start here, say start equals and it returns one because when I do that, this formula now is looking at this cell. So then there's two choose functions here actually. So, and, and they're inside of this sum. So this makes it really nice because I can use the sum and then within the sum, I can use the choose. So here I can, I can produce the starting range for my sum. So say I want to look at what happened in the first quarter, right? So here, start would be one. So the choose function is going to return starts one. The choose function for the sum is going to deliver this date. And then it's going to look to this second choose down here. And here I have end as the variable that I'm giving to, to the choose function. And then it's going to go one, two, three, it's going to give me this third term here. So basically the sum function is going to um, get simplified to that range from, from the plan, plan F7 to plan H7 on the, uh, on the plan revenue chart. Okay. This video continues on part two.